Hi, my name is Kelly Miller, and today I'm going to talk to you about a project I did along with my co-authors, Drs. Jessica Borelli and Gayla Margolin. We looked at how parent-child attunement moderates the link between parental over-control and child adjustment across the transition to adolescence. We started with a common problem in family research, which is that often the same overt parenting behavior can yield really different outcomes for children, both detrimental and beneficial. And this is particularly true when it comes to controlling parenting practices. Parental control has shown transdiagnostic risk for both internalizing and externalizing symptoms in children, but it's also sometimes been shown to be protective against these symptoms. And this is a problem because it's really difficult to inform parenting interventions when the literature seems so mixed about what parenting practices are best. Thinking about this problem, we thought that two factors might be at play. The effect of a parenting behavior could depend on both its dose and also its context. So the goal of our study was to focus just on parental over-control, to see if even harsh autonomy-limiting control might have either a beneficial or detrimental effect on adolescent adjustment, depending on its dose and its context. So when I say that we're focusing on over-control, what I mean is that we were looking just at intrusively or dominantly restricting child autonomy. So that means parents not just telling the child what to do, but also what to think or how to feel. And we predicted that parental over-control could put adolescents at risk for both engaging in more risky behaviors and developing more, and developing more anxiety symptoms. And our thinking here was guided by self-determination theory. We know that children have an inherent need to act in accord with their own intrinsic interests, values, and needs. And when this need is thwarted, it might lead to acting out, impulsively taking any chance they can get uh, to make their own decisions. So for example, engaging behaviors like driving unsafely or shoplifting when parents aren't watching them closely. But it could also lead to acting in. Parental over-control gives children the message that the world is unsafe and that they're not competent to deal with that world by themselves, and this could lead to the development of anxiety. However, it's also possible that over-control could be beneficial. We've certainly seen that in other forms of parenting control, for instance, limit setting. And even harsh control could be beneficial if children are truly incompetent to cope with the demands of the environment, or if the stakes of making the wrong choice are really high. For example, if a child is in a neighborhood where they're at risk of joining a gang. So we predicted that the effect of parental over-control on youth adjustment across the transition to adolescence would depend on both its dose and its context. And when I say context, I'm referring to the larger parent-child relationship context. And we were particularly interested in how much children saw their parents as attuned. Attuned parents understand their child's thoughts, behaviors, and desires. And attunement is inherently autonomy confirming because by saying that your child has their own thoughts and desires, you're acknowledging that your child has a separate autonomous mind. For this study, we followed 114 children from approximately ages 12 to 18. At time one, youth entered the lab and they completed baseline measures of anxiety symptoms and externalizing behaviors. They also reported on their perception of parental attunement. At that time, they also completed a triadic discussion with both mothers and fathers about areas of family life that they'd like to change. Those videos were coded by our lab for parental over-control from both moms and dads, and we looked for behaviors like telling the child how to think, what to feel, or how to behave, dictating what topic was discussed, or dictating the flow of the conversation, demanding response from the child in an ask-and-answer dynamic, or just dominating the conversation in terms of talking the most or interrupting the child. Then at time two, about six years later, about six years later, adolescents again reported on their own anxiety symptoms and engagement in risky behaviors. We found that both mothers and fathers over control had a curvilinear effect on youth risk behaviors. So exerting just a little bit of, low, of over control, in fact, exerting over control at the lowest levels at which we could detect, was protective compared to exerting no over control at all. However, as over-control moved beyond that point, it began to confer risk. We didn't find any main effect of either parent's over-control on child anxiety. We then added attunement as a moderator, 
and we found that attunement moderated the curvilinear effect of over-control on youth's risk behaviors, so that for parents who were low in attunement, over-control was never protective, but highly attuned parents could get away with more over-control before it conferred risk to their children. And that was the case with both moms and dads. When we looked at anxiety as an outcome, we also found a moderation effect, but just for moms. So moms over control conferred risk for anxiety only if moms were also low in attunement. We're excited about these findings because we were able to use an observational measure of parental over control to show that the effects of this parenting behavior depend on both its dose and its context. However, this study couldn't get at the mechanisms underlying these associations. And we really hope that future studies will address this. So it could be that attuned parents are subtly engaging in overcontrol in a different way than less attuned parents. For example, exerting overcontrol more discriminately, only stepping in when the child really needs a firm hand. Or it could be that children who view their parents as otherwise attuned interpret overcontrolling parenting behavior differently. For example, if I really believe that my dad supports my own goal of joining the soccer team, I won't see it as autonomy restricting when he tells me to get out there and run some more laps. I'll see it as autonomy supporting. These findings are also interesting because they remind us that there are multiple ways to intervene with families. We could try to change the overt parenting behavior and get parents to engage in less over control. But we could also try to change the larger parent-child relationship context and focus our interventions on getting parents and children attuned to each other. I encourage you to read our paper to learn more or to be in touch with me about any questions you might have. Thanks so much.